Good morning. This gospel for Mark is so rich, so dense. And yet the moment in the gospel that really touched me this week, of all the things that I could perhaps preach about, and perhaps I'm not brave enough to preach about the fact that Simon's mother, recently healed, had to get up and wait on all those men. We'll, yes, we will leave that for another, another uh, moment. But the moment in the gospel that made me chuckle, and it really did kind of bring a chuckle, was when Jesus tried to find some time to himself. He got up early in the morning, before it was even light, and he went, found a, a quiet place to pray. And he's finally found, and the comment is, everyone is searching for you. As though Jesus really should take this time to himself. And the reason why it made me chuckle as a teacher is that there have been several occasions, certainly it doesn't happen every day, but there have been many occasions where Maybe I'm eating my lunch or I'm in my plan time and I'm trying to get something done. And kids will come to my door. And it's always kind of cute because you know, my door's usually closed during my plan or lunch. And they'll, they'll kind of tap at the door kind of quietly. And if there's a couple of them, I'll hear them kind of giggling or, you know, whispering to each other, you know, is he there? Or, you know. And I want so badly to say, you know, just ignore them, you know. And, um, but, of course, I don't do that. I let them come in and I find out what they need. And um, as it doesn't happen very often, I'm okay with that. But, uh, but yeah, kind of this, this feeling that I almost, you know, feel a little guilty eating my lunch, but my kids need me. I'm sur sure many of you who are parents or maybe my fellow teachers, I know you've all had moments like this. And so it may seem odd also, as I reflect on this, to be thinking of wanting to spend some time, some me time, some time to myself in the middle of a an exhausting pandemic when I think many of us feel that we have had way too much time alone. And yet, I think the point of this, and the point perhaps of Jesus when, and certainly this is not the only time in the gospel, when we are told of Jesus' attempts to find some time for himself. But not just for himself, but rather for the relationship with the one who sent him into the world. And so this really isn't about being alone. It's about what maybe we could call going to the well. You know, we live in a modern period, and we live, fortunately, in a wealthy nation, and in, in most of us, at least, live in communities where potable water is just a faucet away. All we have to do is walk over there, turn the faucet, and boom, we have all the water we want. But for many people in our world, and certainly in the ancient world, that was not the case at all. To find good, life-giving water was sometimes an arduous task. It might have taken a half day's walk, or at the very least, even if you were fortunate enough for your village to have a good well or spring, you would have to go there, and you would have to obtain the water, bring it to the house, and again, in a nod to Simon's mother, that was women's work to do. So kudos to the women for keeping people with, um, supplied with water. And they're still doing it all over the world. But metaphorically, if we think about this, we also have a well that we search for, a well of life-giving waters a well that maybe doesn't keep our physical sense and, and, and reality hydrated, but a well that keeps our soul vibrant and energized and able to serve. And Jesus needed that time. He needed that time to stay connected, to stay focused and to stay aware of the vision, of the big picture so that the mounting needs of the people all around him and the demands that they would bring him, that they, they didn't overbear upon him and didn't wear him out. And yet, I think there were many times he did feel pretty worn out. And yet always he responded with grace and compassion, but it was out of this well 
that he returned to again and again. You know, I was moved recently by the story of a woman who escaped the QAnon um, cult, the conspiracy theory that has destroyed or marred so many lives recently. And I was moved in the story because what helped her to break free was her realization that she was putting this whole conspiracy before her faith in God. And at some moment, she recently realized, you know, what am I doing? This isn't my well. And she returned to that deep abiding faith she has in her God and Jesus. And she, she has become freed from this conspiracy. And God bless her. She's doing what she can now in her social media accounts to help others to, to break free. And I was just so moved by that. She recognized that she'd lost track of her well. But she's found it now. And so I think all of us, maybe especially in this time of pandemic, even though we may have much alone time, we lose track of our well. We forget maybe the path that we must walk to it. And it does need some preparation. You know, whether we find this in meditation or yoga or divine reading or reflection on the lives of the saint, devotion um, to Mary, the mother of God, always ready to comfort souls who are in trouble, whether it's being reflective in nature, taking a walk or, or forest bathing, as the Japanese call it, whether it is just our abiding sitting at the feet of Jesus, letting him be our rabbi and reflecting on his ethical call. You know, how, whatever our jam is, whatever that well is, we need to make the effort to go to it. We need to make the time for it. Because if we don't do that, then it's going to be incredibly difficult for us to find the energy, the compassion, the willingness to serve. Every Sunday we pray right after receiving the holy gifts that the Father might send us out to do the work that we have been given to do. But we're not going to be able to do that work unless we've drank deeply of the well. And certainly, participating even now spiritually in the Holy Eucharist is one way that we can do that. Perhaps the most important way. But I beseech all of us to double down on our efforts in this time to find our well, seek out that path, travel it frequently. Don't feel guilty about taking the time to do it. Drink deeply of your wealth.